This is a continuation of the Create a 3D Mouth Eye Sockets and Colouring the Eyes tutorial, but can be applied to any lipless mouth that has this structure. Lipless mouths are simple to make and can look very cute. However, adding lips can not only enhance a character's personality, but also allow for greater range of expressions and complexity in their appearance. That being said, it's important to remember that lipless characters can still be effective and there's no need to shy away from using them in your creations. If you created your character from scratch using Seamless 3D 3.023 or higher, all your patches will either belong to the group that contains the eyes or the group that contains the rest of the patches. This makes it easier to select all the patches, excluding the patches in the eye group, because all we need to do is select a point in the group we want to work on and then click the bunny in the grey hat. If you started with an earlier version, you can now group all your patches if you're using version 3.023 or higher. To do this, click the bunny, select a control point belonging to the group containing the eyes and then click the grey hat to hide all the cages belonging to that group. Select all the remaining cages and group them. To avoid losing the glints in our eyes, we can export the group of patches that contains the eyes. To do this, select a control point that belongs to the group, click the bunny in the grey hat, select all the shown cages and then from the file menu, select export selected patches. Before clicking save, click this button to reset to the folder that contains our character file if we want our exported patches in the same folder. I like to merge the patches for the mouth until there are only two patches remaining, one for the upper lip and one for the lower lip. This makes it easier to select the mouth for squashing, stretching, dragging up and down, in or out, which is something I frequently do when experimenting with a face. Having the mouth made of two patches lets us work on one half of the mouth while the other half is hidden. This can make it much easier to shape the inner region of the mouth when one half can be in the way of the half we're working on. It's easy to spoil the look of a simple mouse by giving it lips, so it's good practice to save your file before experimenting. This lets you go back to try your luck again another day. Insert a ring between these two rings to give greater control curving the coloured region of the lips. That's the region where lipstick would be applied. Another ring inserted around the mouth will help us shape the cheeks. Pressing the back quote key, that's the key just below the S key, hides the cages from view without changing our selection of shown cages. Pressing the back quote key again toggles the cages back in view. As a result of shaping the mouth, the black dome may appear, so some adjusting to the dome may be needed to keep it hidden. To import the eyes back, first delete the existing patches in the eye group by selecting a control point in the group. Click the bunny in the grey hat, select the cages and delete. Now to import the eyes back, from the file menu select import patches, select the eye group file and click open. Click this button to reset the transform fields for the selected control points. If you want your head to have a smooth rounded shape which can make it easier to get an appealing look, focus on the outline of your head from different view orientations to see where the angles stick out and where to adjust the points. Sometimes the points that cause the angles are located further back from the outline so you may need to rotate some more to get an idea which points need adjusting. Since we're creating a simplified face, it's not necessary to shape the lips exactly like real ones. However, 
Many of the principles that apply to creating realistic lips can also be applied when creating a stylized face. From a side view, you can see that I have only these three rings to define the lipstick region. However, there is also this ring that goes into the head that helps define the lips, and there's this ring we need for the lips to protrude. Therefore, we have a total of five rings to define the lips. This point should stick out to make the lips protrude, while these points should create a gradual curve into the mouth. This will prevent the lips from protruding near the corners of the mouth. Much the same as for the top lip, this point should dip in to help this point protrude the lips, while these points should form a gradual curve into the mouth. The upper lip's lipstick region tends to be quite flat, while it tends to curve a lot more for the bottom lip, especially here. Bringing the corners of the mouth in while keeping the cheeks out to make it more childlike can create a cute look. While these rules can help me create a pleasing mouth, I've seen great art that breaks them, like Lady Tottington, for example. Before we can see our character animate again, because of the new control points added to the head, we must first go into paint color coded control points mode, select the head bone and reapply ownership to the head. Please don't expect to get a desired result as quickly as I show. Pre-prepared work, multiple takes and editing are used to keep my tutorials concise.